Hey, John here. Just had a snowstorm, so uh, kind of inside doing some inside stuff. Let's talk depth gauges or rakers or drags or riders, whatever you'd like to call them. Lots of talk about how to sharpen the tooth, but why all the different styles of depth gauges? So this here is your basic depth gauge. I have another model here of a, what's called a Vanguard type depth gauge. So I thought to explain the why all of these different styles, and I'll show you a few pictures here. The way I think is easiest way to explain the why is think of the factory that makes saw chain. If we think of that as far as having three department heads. So let's talk about one department head would be the sales department. <clears throat> sales department, obviously, they're looking for their happy customer. Chainsaw world, a happy customer means their saw chain cuts fast. That's what they're looking for. So the sales department, he goes, she goes to the engineer department and says to the engineer, build me a chain where the, my customer is just going to be thrilled with how fast it cuts. The engineer says, I can do that. I can give you a chain that will just cut really fast through the wood. The third department is the legal department or the lawyers. The lawyers come in and say, now, wait a minute, who's using our product? What skill level do they have? What kind of wood are they cutting? Um, what size power head? All of those questions are an unknown as far as when that product goes out the window. They know that they are really, really concerned, afraid of a kickback causing an injury to their customer. So your lawyer department, they're saying, okay, we want a product that the customer is happy with but we know that a chain that cuts really fast, with it comes a high chance of a kickback coming off the tip of the bar. So we all know if we got our power head this way, right? We've got your pushing chain on the top, got a pulling chain on the bottom. We have what we call the attack corner here, but then on the very top, which is kind of crazy, right? It's only what maybe that's an inch and a quarter of that surface area, that right there gives the lawyers nightmares because a reaction off the tip of that bar drives the saw up and can cause very serious injury. So can you see where we have a competing, um, those three competing department heads, if you will, at the factory? We got the sales, we got the engineers that say, I can do whatever you want. The lawyers are saying, now, wait a minute, we don't want to get sued if at all possible. And of course, we don't want someone getting hurt. In the tree cutting world, we need to be able to work with the tip of that bar. There's a lot of very useful and we feel safe ways to fell trees, buck, limb trees, but we need to be able to use the end of that bar. So... In comes the compromise with trying to keep a chain that cuts fast enough, but at the same time trying to reduce the potential of a serious kickback off of the tip of that bar. So the depth gauge designs, where, what they're coming up with. Let's go to one end. This depth gauge is what you would find on saw chain that's going to cut the fastest through the log. That's what the professional users most likely are going to be using if they're felling, limbing, bucking logs. This is what a lot of folks are using in the woods. Now, that is an application of boots on the ground, and we'll talk about that in a second, why I want to highlight that boots on the ground user, and we're looking at a skilled operator. They understand the kickback reaction potential, they're aware of the end of that bar, what they're doing with it, and how to use it. Then we start going to getting into, I have one model here of an idea that reduces the kickback potential. 
and that is to make that depth gauge kind of, it, it basically looks like they bent it over and you have a wider surface area there. What they're concerned about with the kickback is that narrow style depth gauge going around the tip of the bar. And you'll see the pictures I took of these different depth gauges. I placed them all at the very radius, top radius of the bar. They're concerned about the depth gauge actually getting stuck. Okay, you know, very crude example here, but going around the tip of the bar, getting stuck into the wood, you have a blunt piece of steel jamming the tooth. That stops the chain and the bar rotates around the chain, driving the bar upward, and we have a kickback. So if they can do something to minimize this effect here, that is one of them, this Vanguard chain idea, where they, they roll that over. And then I'll throw in a few pictures here. And I tried to put them in kind of progressively from the high kickback potential to the lowest kickback potential style of depth gauges. And you'll see the last one where they actually put in, I think I could find it really quick here just to kind of highlight it while I'm talking about it is I call it a shark fin, all right? And if we can see that up against my shirt. So they've got that shark fin idea so that when it goes around the tip of the bar, that sticks out and almost prevents the chain from digging in at all. I wanna clar clarify something, be really, really clear. And this is some uh, sloppiness in the language that I hear out there in the chainsaw world. There is no such thing as an anti-kickback chain. It doesn't exist. Any saw that is going around the tip of a bar with that kind of energy and that kind of speed can cause some reaction resulting in some kickback. However, by these designs, it reduces that energy. Now, some of it's quite a bit. And I can tell you that some of the chains I've tried, bore cutting, it's... It's really hard to not say that won't kick back, but of course the lawyers would never wanna say that they can't. So there's no such thing as anti-kickback. The language that's used is reduced kickback features. That's what, um, that's what you're gonna see in the chain manuals. Now, I mentioned that the uh, speed cutting chain, your professional style chain, that's what the fellas are using if they're um, looking for production felling, limbing, bucking. However, there is one large group of saw users that I feel the reduced kickback chain is really the go-to, in my opinion. That's what I would wanna be using if I were doing this kind of work, and that is the arborists. So the arborist, meaning they're doing tree work, i.e. up in a tree, either hanging in a rope harness or working out of a bucket type bucket truck. In that situation, there is, I'll be careful with the absolute words here, but very, very uh, minimal reason that anybody would be doing any kind of bore cutting with the tip of the bar if you're up in a tree, taking a tree apart in pieces. So there's no reason to have a chain that allows you to bore cut it's not a technique you're gonna be using up there. They are taking limbs off and then they'll take the weight out. And then in the larger stem, they may even use a different saw where they're gonna you know, uh, do your notch or undercut with the hinge and the back cut. You're not gonna see them trying to bore through the tree. So why would they, in my opinion, be, um, I would steer them towards using a reduced kickback style chain what comes along with arborists are the top handled saws. We all know that you're not supposed to use those top handled saws with one hand. But in the real world, if they're honest, it's done. Even when you hold a top handle saw correctly, both hands are very close together, giving you very little control of that saw should it kick back. So I'm hoping you can kind of put the, 
you know, one and one together and coming up with two. And that is, we're not using the tip of the bar up there in a tree from a rope harness or a bucket truck. Those are simple bucking cuts. And two, up there, there is no place to be working with a chain that gives you that high potential of a kickback because the kickback would result in an injury. You're up in a tree in a bucket or a harness. And I always like to point out that an arborist, I'm gonna step back here just a little bit and just use my bar, okay? An arborist's work zone is what I call it. Their work zone with that bar is in this circle, okay? It's basically kind of chest and above is where they're working with that saw. Any kind of kickback, and it doesn't need to be an extreme kickback, just a little pop back from one of those small saws, and you've got a serious problem to be struck, head, shoulder, neck, that kind of thing, from a kickback. And the, um, the other work area, just to kind of point it out, is with what I mentioned, boots on the ground, boots on the ground saw work, that is where our bar tends to spend its most of its time in that waist, knee height, you know, that's our comfortable work zone. Yeah, we come up once in a while to take a limb off and so on, but we have good planning and good saw technique. That's basically where that bar spends most of its time. So that, I hope, um, helps with uh, what's up with all these different depth gauges. Now, why would one style chain cut faster than the other? A couple things. One, when you start to add steel, Okay, going back to this um, one with a shark fin in between the teeth is a really good example of the extremes here. When you start to add another piece of steel, you're simply adding weight to the chain. So that saw, it robs the power a little bit. The other thing that your reduced kickback feature does is it takes up the space, I'll throw a little video here, that's referred to as the chip carrying capacity. Chip carrying capacity means as your chain is going through the log, the chips are trapped in the kerf, they can't go sideways, and they gather up in between the teeth. And if that gets all packed up, then they'll start to pack up in you know this area here. But all of that mean creates drag as before that those chips can finally get dumped, if you will, you know, come, as I call it, daylighting out the end of the cut, and then the whole process starts over. So those two, two things there, um, they do slow your cutting speed down a little. So you can see where the production cutter, skilled, aware of the tip of the bar, they know how to use it, they're going to hedge toward that um, death gauge, which is a higher potential kickback arborists up in the trees, occasional users of sauce. You know, we uh, call them homeowners, the non-professionals. They're going to be uh, encouraged to use a reduced kickback style chain, give up a little bit of cutting speed, but it's reducing the chance of a severe energy kickback, a high energy kickback, uh, should the tip of that bar hook into something and you're, you're not planning on it. So... Hope that helps. Take care.